Yes, welcome back. This is F Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16, and no, I didn't go out. Uh, but I'm joined by my very special guest. This is part two. I have back Mr. Cliff, the one and only rhyme expert, rap pro. Uh, and if you this don't, this is how we do. This is how we do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you don't get that reference, we're still talking about the classic album '93 to Infinity by Souls of Mischief which turns 30 this year. This is category two, where we go over the rap performance on the album. Take a moment to jump over to the rap ruler and you can cop camo shirts like this. Not like the one that he has on, cause you know, we don't we don't own that brand, but we are coordinated. That's how me and Cliff do. We've been doing this since 2002. <laughs> so happy to have you here, bro. That was the funny part. What'd you say? Completely accidental too, that's the best part. <laughs> Yeah, man. So we're going to jump right into it. The first dimension in category two is dimension one, personality and charisma. Was there personality and charisma? Because that's usually the ingredient that keeps you wanting to listen track by track to an artist instead of skipping around and saying, I heard a song. Uh, how much of that are we getting on this album? You are getting a bunch of personality. You are getting tons of it. I mean, because it's also a different sound. We don't hear Oakland people talk in hip hop like that. You feel it. They say everything with confidence. They're young, they're energetic, and it's just the passion is flowing out of all of their flows. The passion is there. What a great, what a great mix of words you just said. Energy, passion, and I think you brought up in, in the first video that it's a four man group, right? So with four, you get this platform to have four personalities, four personas showcase, and you get that. You get it, especially if you're paying enough attention, but this is not a hard group to figure out because on some songs, they sound more similar to each other than others. But mm -hmm. after a while you pick up that, you know, I think on the documentary, they said A plus is the most grounded member of the group. He keeps the group glued and he's probably the most, uh, it gives you the most digestible raps. Festo is the most out there because some of his pension his patterns in general some of his idiosyncrasies opio they they talked about how he raps probably the most aggressive with what he's saying as opposed to tajay who might sound the most aggressive but it's probably saying more of the thought provoking stuff so uh all four of them also use humor but not in a in a rap comedy way just humor to let you know that they're not super duper serious. They're serious on this mic, but not serious, like nobody's smiling serious. It's like, oh yeah, I can throw some puns, witty things and make you laugh and make a comedic reference. Uh, and so you're getting that, right? especially, you know, you hear things like when Tajay on Limitations, how he starts his verse, right? When Tajay throws his mighty mic, like you gotta be a certain amount of like, silly and, and self-deprecating to even do that old 60s Captain America cartoon reference, right? <laughs> so, you get that. They were one of the first uh, groups I heard with that many comic references in their rhymes, too. There's mm -hmm. only three or four solid that I remember. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. who was talking about Apocalypse or, or uh, you know what I mean, or Colossus, right? Who was or, talking yeah. about before the X-Men cartoon came out? Or whack like Batman sound effects, like you said, right? Exactly. Uh, so you get it and you and you you start getting the different uh ideas of their different personalities within the group. Uh and then they, when they add sprinkles of the high row camp, you learn them. Sometimes I think the guests on this album help speak to what Souls of Mischief wanted to represent. So Pep Love choosing to do such a hype song like That's Where You Lost, real calm and collective. He's just like, yo, you stepping it in? That's where you lost. You lost. <laughs> That could have been an Onyx style hook, right? You step in us, that's what you, they didn't choose to do that. He's like, yo, you step in us, OPO, that's what you lost. Step in, you smoking that crack rock. <laughs> same thing with Dell. Dell is using that same kind of snarky um, choice in how he does the hook on limitations. MC should know their limitations, limitations. <laughs> and instead of being like, you should know your limitations. There's no aggression there. They're just like, you really want to do this with this crew? You really want to do this? <laughs> so, um, those are the extents of personality. I think you get a fair share of it. I think the charisma in the group, I think you you nailed it right there too. But 
it's funny because I think they had all the other things ready for, and I hate to go back to themes of the first episode, but I think that's where the mass appeal is, right? They actually have all these tools for mass appeal, except the literal rhymes are so experimental and different. Yeah. There's four of them. And each of the four, maybe a plus a little bit less, but uh, uh, the other three is like, it's almost too much for the average person to digest, right? Because yeah. of the rapid fire. And so it's like, but it gives them the freedom to be that crazy with their lyrics because all the other things are in line. You can listen to the beats alone. If you listen to the instrumental album, it's a fire instrumental album for a hip hop album. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with every, everything you said. <laughs> so on a scale from one to five heartbeats, we'll be giving this for personality and charisma. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a, a personality and charisma five. My only limitation was like, if I look at it from someone else's lens, like, well, people like this personality, right? But it's it's showing personality. So it's, I'm not saying this is me not judging those personalities, right? So that's where my five comes from. It's wow, they give you personalities. What a good point, because I mean it. Hip hop is mostly based on your perception of the personality, right? And the the second part of that is how much do you like it, right? Because Cool Keith has a very, very, I mean, half of his career is his personality or whichever personality he wants to put, but how likable is it? Old Dirty Bastard, it's a very hate it or love it kind of thing, right? So yeah, great, great point. So dimension two is the believability or suspension of disbelief. So right off the bat, we got to use process of elimination. Is this an album where you're being asked to suspend your disbelief? Um, I don't think they're jumping into any fantastic territory where it's understood that this is a character ride. I think they're telling you this is who they are. You know, one of the members just uses this government name. So uh, I, I think it, it'd be safe to say that you could eliminate thinking of this as an album where you have to suspend your disbelief. What do you say? Yeah, they're not fake at all, right? And right. even when they talk about doing criminal stuff, if you really listen deep, they're really not talking about doing that personally. Yeah. It's, it's from a character perspective or from what a way to go out if you're acting like this. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. I mean, I'm not really going to shoot my little sister on accident. It's like I'm a struggling teenager, don't know which way to go, and I really don't have the skills to be a gangster, but I'm going to show these brothers I have a skill to be a gangster. I'm going to do some randoms. We're going to do this. So I found an easy victim. And it's like, Right. It's like, I don't believe you. You sound like you don't know what you're talking about at all. Yeah. Even though it sounds kind of silly to follow your little sister and not know it's her and shoot her. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> the silliest part of that flow, but that that's what I mean. You know, in, in video one, I talked about how much youth dominates this album. I think youth comes with limited ideas, right? Which is why, you know, you think of gangster rap. Gangster rap is a youth, <laughs> youth oriented subgenre of rap because mm -hmm. it's the work of usually people who are like 17 to 25 and they have not seen the world yet or, or expanded beyond their block, let alone knowing the, the ins and outs of life. So it's their world then and there. Um, and it, yeah, because they do songs at the beginning, like Live and Let Live, where they're absolutely telling you from their perspective, the person I am, like Tajay says stuff like, you understand, I love humans they hate me right he's like telling you i don't want to do this here's what will happen and that's kind of all of their points mm -hmm. even though i think opio abstracts it a little and we'll talk about that in a, in a further dimension you you get the basic idea that set the tone for any other time you hear them on the album talking about guns uh and so it's understood when you get to a song like what a way to go out that they're giving you these fictional anecdotal uh, short synopsis of, of situations. The gripe comes where anything can happen. I think that that was kind of a, I, I just feel like they wanted to make a story song. And so here's a story song. It, it didn't really have any art to it. It was like, <laughs> I want an excuse to make a song about shooting somebody, but what's a situation that would be likely where I would do that? Oh, you shoot my mom. I just thought that was a genius song, especially when I first heard it. Mm. Because it was maybe the first time I heard a, a four man crew stay on the same topic and all write a song together about a story. 
I don't know if I've ever heard that. Right. Execution you know I mean? instead that's... of why. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, but but like I guess you're going on the same track. So I don't know. I I don't know if I'm I'm not trying to like uh, go against your criticism, but it's like for me, but especially back then when I heard that maybe this is my useful brain too. I was just like, man, like they all jumped in on this story and made it seem realistic. But it's just wow, that amazed me that they did that. A whole a group four men, four dudes write the song and tell the story together. Like you don't get that from a two man group. <laughs> I just thought it, it might have jumped a little bit out of character. I think that's the one song where you're really being asked to spin your disbelief because they didn't assume any roles in that one. They didn't say, hey, I'm this anonymous character. They're saying, no, this is me. This happened. And then for no reason towards it, it just gets more violent than it needs to be. I thought it was going to have some kind of plot twist that kind of goes in the vein of everything else that we heard on the album with these guys telling you they're not gangsters and they don't do this. Uh, you know, Opio in his verse, he did say something like, hoods come a dime a dozen. And so I'll call up my cousins. And, and so they are insinuating that they are not of this lifestyle, but they're not beyond retaliation mm -hmm. <laughs> from this well, kind of lifestyle. So, and I agree with you, because we're still yeah. on suspension of disbelief, right? So it's like, right. it's like the safest way to make a tough song. There you go. It was their tough song. It was definitely their tough their song. Tough song. It was, this, this, <laughs> this is hard. This for the hood right here. This is hard. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think you, you raised some great points. And then lastly, the way they talk about women, I talked about how you can hear the youthfulness. So you hear them talk about this song. You know, there's only so much experience with women you have when you're 17. So this song sounds like what it is. Yeah, I, I maybe had some sex, but a lot of this is super projection of what I would like to do sexually, right? So it's like, yeah, I'm gonna bend it this way and split it in half and, you know, like. Yeah, they're so, over the top. Yeah, very yeah. over the top. Um, and it, that's where it speaks to the time capsule of rapping of the time period, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, everybody had some sort of songs where they were just saying crazy stuff like that. And they keep, and they repeated that slang, the boo-boo head slang. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to bring that up while your dude from the Bay was here because I didn't even know if that was just a local slang or if that was strictly hieroglyphics because yeah. Daryl has a song called Boo Boo Head on one of his albums and it seemed like a, the a theme of word that I heard throughout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just going to yeah, ask. I had you. that same question. I was going to ask that same question. But yeah. So, so what do you give this on a, a scale from one to five when we're talking about the believability? Five, like... Um, because I just don't think they were trying to be something they're not for the most part. And if I want to nitpick one part here or there out of a 14 track album, it's like, give me five, five. They're more believable than the mud, everything else that came out that year. And that's why I like them because we're just some rapping ass normal people. <laughs> we're cool rappers that are accepted by our friend groups and we're chilling. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> you know, people, you know what I mean? Just so you're going to ignore that whole song? That ain't nitpicking, that's a whole song. <laughs> well, they might be a, like a little bit this way. We don't know, but they don't, okay. you know, they don't glorify it in their whole personality, but they might, one fourteenth of them might be this, this willing to do this in that scenario because they are from Oakland and Talk about shooting off kneecaps. <laughs> over the top. Uh, <laughs> Dimension three, the delivery and use of voice. Delivery, all about how they approached the mic, how they approached their projection, the timing. Do I like that OPO started the very first song with, you know, you're irresponsible. It's like, okay. All right, that was dope, but like you just came in bus and it's like, right? Do I hate? Do I hate it because it, it might not seem acceptable to what some other thing might be, or do I like it because oh man, that was experimental and different, and he's just busting like yo. So um, I appreciated it. I appreciated it a lot. Uh, Fresco, I really liked him when it first came out. As time went on. I think I wasn't feeling as much of the forced flows, but I, but that's kind of his thing. The majority of them use a nasal approach, right? We had these high pitched voices. Sometimes uh, I think Opio might have one of the more standout voices or distinct mm -hmm. voices, and Tajay tends to err on the side of Ras. But Festo and A Plus, 
uh, float in this high pitch space. And I think you pointed out Festo's defining feature is how hard he pronounces certain consonant sounds. Right? Yeah, with Okio with the consonants, hard R's with Okio. Oh, that's uh, they call that the Oakland accent. Yeah, because that's it's his West accent. It's the West Coast accent. He's but I do hard R's. I think you use the word force, and I think Festo does more forcing with his yeah. approach. Right? Yeah. There's there's a push that kind of blocks the fluidity. I'd even say. Uh, but you'll hear Tajay like this one song where he sounds especially raspy. And I'm like, oh, why does he sound so raspy on that track? I think it's bad in practice. Um, and other songs like 93 Till Infinity, the title track, where he's kind of gliding more. But nevertheless, he probably has the most, I don't want to say deepest voice out of all four, but probably the most, you know, ground level voice. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they all are projecting aggressively on most tracks. Uh, yeah, I think you just mentioned how Opio came in, right? <laughs> First mm -hmm. words on the album. <laughs> Irresponsible. <laughs> I love that. I love that whole thing. But yeah, that's 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 hilarious to me. Yeah. Man. And it's so much, so many things at once. You're like, wait, wait, what did he just say? Vice grips? Right. What did he say? Yeah, and 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 vice. <laughs> yeah. And then you get A plus, you know, the reason why I think they they say he's the the, the most grounded member. Everybody else is coming out on those first tracks like rah rah. He's like, hey, nah, I'm that nigga, a eh? that nigga, a eh? I do it in a very special nigga way. You know, like, <laughs> and we need that. I almost wish there was more of that. But if, unfortunately, with a group like this, if you had someone, if you would just have one member with a slower style, they would have been seen as the weak link. Like they all had to keep up with each other to be seen as like a unit. Maybe. Maybe. But I really appreciated the deliveries when I first heard it, right? Mm -hmm. um, now looking back like 30 years later after the whole flows of hip hop have advanced and done different things, it's like I can nitpick what I didn't like from maybe a style that I'm not as crazy about or thinking that they overloaded us with all these words and syllables, but that kind of was necessary that they were dropping like, we used to say dropping science and it's like, this was the dropping science group. Like you listen even F Festo's lyrics, like his uh, vocabulary, like you have to say some of these things and try to rhyme them with different words a certain way. It's like, man, that was different. And, and the way they found ways to deliver that stuff was real cool. Um, delivery, delivery. There were some forced parts though. There's a lot of, there's some very forced parts, but yes. when I was first rapping, there was some forced parts. On my That's so really, I was just about to say, you know this firsthand as a rapper that delivery is always a choice. Uh, me and me and my homegirl Indigo, shout out to Indigo. We talk often about that era in the '90s where a lot of underground female rappers felt like they had to be as hard as the dude. So it wasn't as uncommon in the '90s to hear female rappers rapping like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's more cool to rap like cutesy girly. So you're hearing a lot of rappers are like in it, in it, in it. Uh, that voice wouldn't have made it in the '90s. We're still, and this is where time is important. Uh, this, besides just being the fact that these are 17 year olds, they're, they're young, their voices are bound to change a little bit more. They also were projecting a certain way because that was probably one of the last years where that style was in. Everybody, you know, Onyx famously said, oh, everybody want to sound grimy, right? That was the style to kind of make your voice sound more animated than it was. Uh, uh, that was the era of that. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. an era of that. Yeah, I think if, if Souls of Mischief were to listen back to this now, they themselves would probably cringe because they know their own voices. But it was 93. Um, does that sound as pleasing to the ear nowadays? I don't know. And I think that's what you were touching on. Like, yes, there's there's a split between thinking this was the illest thing back then, hearing it now, and you kind of got to look past it a little at certain points. And I think Festo, out of everyone, does the most forcing of his projection because there's some tracks where he comes on like the very first song let him know he's like here i am like a jedi with the saber <laughs> like there's a lot of emphasis on certain sounds because i'm major right and he's enunciating it to a to the intense level right he's not just saying like how you just said it you said it smoother than he did he's like like a jedi jedi, jedi. like 
push on every syllable. Uh, and, and those are the moments that are like, oh, okay. The thing with Festo is that uh, a lot of times his delivery projection style doesn't match uh, harmoniously with the beat. I think of how he came on uh, certain songs on there and it just doesn't mesh well. I'm like, why would he come so loud and boisterous on this track? Uh, where I think the re the other members usually got the memo. Uh, they're like, okay, I'm I'm gonna match my tone. I think there might be two songs where Tajay is raspier than he needs to be, um, but for the most part, Opio and A Plus they match uh, the the feel of the beat. There's there's about three songs where Festo is like super loud and for no reason, and the beat is smoother. So on tracks like a name I call myself, I do think. He was being too much in his MC bag to match the uh, the melodiousness of it. On delivery and use of voice, what you giving this uh, this album? Um, delivery and use of voice. Um, oh man, three and a half. Three and a half. Three okay. and a half. Man. I want to give it a four, but it's like I, I want to take a little bit of a point off. I'm struggling though. I'm struggling though because it was dope when it dropped. And I used to like all that shit. I used to like <laughs> Festo rap. I thought it was different. I used to like all that shit. And so uh, this is me being grown, listening to it, like trying to give it some other. Oh, they could have done this better when they were 18 and figuring out how they should, their styles get better as they grow older, right? Like, this is, you know what I mean? Like, how fair do we want to be, Cliff? Nobody gave us that shot, right? Someone's paying you. And you're 18, and be like, oh, you'll get better over time. Nah, you gotta be good, <laughs> or, or you won't move records. And, and that's how it. That's how it is. So, Dimension Four, the flow, <laughs> it's so different. It's I mean, so different. Jesus Christ, it just blew my mind. A plus, bro. I mean, Opio and A plus, like those were my favorites back then. Listening, and every now and then, Tajay would just do something. Now I just thought it was like. Yeah, that was mind blowing, bro. Like, I, it just, it was so dope to me. It was just crazy to me. The flows were just insane to me. Like I mentioned, make your mind up. Like it gets no better than that. It just doesn't get better than that. That I intro. He's gonna twist the kids, Sarah Bell, I'm if he live, I'm gonna tell him I leave his head swelling. Went yeah. to tell brothers about the five, six, live bits, me investigating fly chicks, private. See, I'm yeah. the man, the number man, the strategy, 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 better because I got a fatter salary. Actually, you will be cooking like bottom ramen, never top, because you'll never stop the atom bombing. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, don't copy the man, you script man, you slip, you sloppy. Joe Schmo never the, I was like, ah! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like hip hop moments. You know what I mean? Hip hop moments. And, and so, again, you know, like I have to think vicarious influence, right? Even though I didn't hear these things directly to know, the people that I was influenced by is probably influenced by the, the, the flows presented here, right? Like I would trace a lot of my flow back to Black Thought on the Illidale Half Life album, but I'm pretty sure Black Thought was bumping hieroglyphics, right? Roots Wild around the same time. And things that we cherish and, and herald in hip hop on a purest level as being dope w were introduced on this album. Like they were taking the best of elements that already existed in hip hop and, and putting them together to make something that we hadn't heard. Like if we dissect what they were doing, yeah, we heard this stuff. Uh, someone called this the connect the dots flow. They definitely, leaned on more than anything else what they leaned on is the hangover bar endings right so their last word is going to be on the second half of the beat yeah right the the last word is going to bleed into the next sentence of the next bar sometimes not keeping the flow up as well like i said i think some members do it better than others like if i had to a plus because he's the most grounded his verses are usually the most concise. He's not depending on that hangover thing as much. And Tajay, whereas Festo and Opio, they rely on that, which as rap writers, I'm sure you could tell, you could usually tell who leads with the pin more than with the flow. I think of a group like Camp Love. 
you can't tell me that Camp Lowe didn't come up with their flows first and then squeeze words to fit it, right? Mm -hmm. Like they were, they were very much about, I'm gonna rhyme this flow pattern for four bars and switch it to this flow pattern for four bars. I'll figure out what I'm gonna say in between. I feel like they came up with the first and then put the words in. With souls, it sounds like they let the pin lead them and some of them are better at controlling that than others. These word association rappers, you're either very jam-packed, concise, with making sure everything counts, or you're kind of getting lost in your wordiness. I know this because I've been guilty of it uh, mm -hmm. in my early days of rap. Like I would be like, you know, <laughs> streaming and you're dreaming because I'm leaning. And then instead of being like, all right, I'm ending it right on this word, cleaning. <laughs> I'm right. guilty of it sometimes still. I'm with, yeah. you. with the flows of this, it's like, it's also different than, it's like, it's hard to judge because it's, it has this experimental touch to it. And that's, that's what I've been struggling with judging it just throughout, because it's not like the typical, I don't even want to say typical, but like a lot of New York flows, especially like a Brooklyn flow is very on beat. Yeah. Period. Period. You know what I mean? Boot camp is on beat. Mm -hmm. All of them. You know what I mean? Sometimes Top Dog was slipping, but, <laughs> but for the most part, you know what I mean? Oh, Boot Camp was on beat. You know what I mean? You need somebody yeah. to chase these on beat. He might jump off with some different, right. different thing. And let's get back to Souls now. They mastered how to get, it sounds like four different individuals just writing their own way, right? But they mastered how to make it sound like a uh, cohesive team yes. where, where Slaughterhouse couldn't figure that out. They couldn't figure it out. Maybe the beats help, didn't help them figure it out and for the albums that actually dropped, right? These great rappers who understand certain ways of rhyming, also very technical and experimental in some ways. Yeah. And maybe Joe Budden being the most easy to digest rapper out of all of them. Right. And just hearing a bunch of it's like, okay, this is a lot for the average person. Yes. And the beat better be fire or I'm not even gonna listen to all these songs, right? Right. for the average person. Whereas I thought like Souls of Mischief, same problem, beats a little hotter, they were a little more cohesive, had better hooks. Mm -hmm. So they made it work a little better. So I can hear Festo do this for this amount of time, or I can hear, you know. And when it was new and young and 93, I had more patience to hear all of that. Everyone yeah. wanted to hear all the albums. There were less rappers doing that. These yeah. were the only things doing that that I remember outside yeah. of what the Project Blow type rapper who was really doing some else, right? So it was Battle like- Watch might have been, you know, like, but these are, it's still new. Like you said, it's it's the mind blowing aesthetic to it in a year like 1993. They, they were paying attention to things that it took rappers to the turn of the century to care about. Uh, and we'll talk about that in the next dimension, but like, bro, you hit it on the notes. There's, as opposed to a, a group like Goody Mob, which is a grab bag of styles, right? And this is what I was saying earlier about if one of these members had been a slow rapper, they would have been perceived as the weaker because the beauty of souls is they sound like a brotherhood. They, they all keep up with each other. No matter if you, one, one's verses might be better or more concise than the other, but sonically, nobody sounds like a weak link. Um, mm -hmm. As opposed to Goody Mob, if you hear CeeLo busting and doing his fast, verse but you hear Cujo doing what sounds more like spoken word you might be like ah or that's what you listen to them for maybe you listen to them because you're gonna get that variation like Timo's gonna shout Cujo's gonna talk Gip is gonna chant CeeLo's gonna be super wordy or sing that's what you listen to them for this group wasn't like that you listen for the the homogeneity and the sprinkles of difference and variation mm -hmm. Festo Sean you know I mentioned these being like the two tightest Versus is uh, on Bad in Practice and uh, Never No More, which ironically, he is the wordiest of every of any song on his whole album on his verse on Never No More. But those eight bars, he has control of it. He's really like, he's purposely going off beat with the bigger words and stuff. Uh, like he's, what he said, the, the, he used the word like centrifuge in the middle of the verse. He's like, I'm killing it, but he lands it. In, a, in all the safe places. So it really sounds like he is just 
syllable shredding. Killing him. He sounds like a mad scientist. He in there. I remember the video glasses and like a flannel was just sound looking like he about he's giving you his science project and it's this bar, these bars. Right. <laughs> but I wish I wish he had that same control throughout the album. That and that's what I mean. Him and Opio relied on the hanging bars. Like Mr. Mr. Cliff is on it and bit in, instead of landing that and being able to fit Mr. Cliff at the end of that sentence. Every other sentence they use is gonna rely on that hangover. Like, I'm yes. a, where it, again, it feels like, yes, you have your dog on a leash, but the dog is pulling you. As opposed to if you have more control of the verse. And we talk often about hollow rhymes on this, um, on this channel, because we get someone like Twister, all his hollow rhymes are to lead you to that syncopation, to the moment he wants to lead you to, then he mm -hmm. brings it back. There's a there's a linear beginning and end to that. These guys are getting lost in it. And well, see, and, that, and that's the question right there. Are they getting lost in it, or are they just like, is this their way of doing it the completely different experimental way? And then that just comes to, eh, do I believe that they meant to do it like that or not? Right. Right. Because we're coming from an era in this time of hip hop where there's all there's still that underground LA project blow sound where people are doing weird styles purposely, no rules halfway off beat, some a little bit of them, or like, since we keep going to, since we keep going to Wu-Tang, one of my, one of my favorite dudes from the Wu-Tang uh, extended people was uh, Holocaust. Yeah. At one point I was like, this dude is incredible. I love yeah. how we landed this flows. But now if you hear a Holocaust song, he don't rap on beat at all purposely. I can't stand it but I know someone who, they love it, no rules. And I'm like, bro, I cannot listen to this. This is not the same rapper whose right. talent landing on the beat with his punchline and these syllables. And now he's like, oh, that's boring. I'm doing this now. Yeah. It's like, is that what Festo was doing? That maybe rubbed me wrong, but maybe that's a personal problem. You know what I'm saying? But no, I don't think so. Cause that's where we get to that conversation of things, things that we know without philosophical debate things that we know are universally pleasing sonically people gravitate towards things that are on beat and lead them to a place you're always gonna have niche people that are like oh i can listen to a whole silk the shaka album <laughs> but for the majority history has shown that is not an appealing thing you can't do this like it's charging to the games like one of the best no limit albums <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know how dope that was initially. He's sitting there rhyming so many words. So like, many words. Jeez, yeah. he's giving us back-to-back -back sentences sometimes, straight up complete. There's flow magic going on. Like it it matters to them to connect rhyming words, especially and you'll hear it when they're going back and forth, right? Um whether it's themes, like on 93 till infinity they're going to pick up from the last scene, right? Where he's like, for inspiration, he, I get inspired by the blunts too. I front you, right? Or actual words. Word. Actual words. So if this last word was this, this rapper's picking up off of that last word or syllable sound. So there's this cohesiveness in how they volley off of each other too, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is interesting. You mentioned uh, on Tell Me Who Profits, how Opio and Festo are going back and forth on that second verse and they, they do that well. I wish they did more back and forth throughout the album, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a fan of when groups deviate and do different uh, configurations. They do take turns leading songs. Every now and then you get a song that A Plus leads, uh, Tajay will lead one, Festo leads like, I think one song on there, and Opio leads the rest. So it's a great mix and variation of, of setting it off. Lessons be stored in. It's, mm -hmm. it's like Little's Porridge. Man. Yep. Man. I'm quick to rip the pad. I'm, I'm quick to rip the pad. Rip the pad. Rip the pad. That's what I mean. So we take an example like that. What Tajay did there, everything said is intentional. That's what I mean. Some of them have more control than others. When you read that back, it it every it's a it's a full sentence. He's like, yeah, he might have said something like like lentil soup, it's nasty. It's a little silly, but then he immediately rhymes it with, Mr. Massey is the last G to be on that list of that. So he's like, then I- Medical text to class me. Right. So ask me. That's a complete thought, right? He's not just 
getting it's, lost it's in all the things. Right, he's not getting lost in all the things that could rhyme with nasty. He's like, all right, I've made my point there. <laughs> then he says, If I had to grip my pad, the rips I grab would rip and stab the kids that sad, the shit that's drab and flavorless and reckless. Your right. best behavior gets. <laughs> I play the hits, displays the shit. A razor gets parlayed a mist and later splits a Philly that I made you hit. A relief that I gave to kids when I punched them. I crunch men in a function. Right. Like, this is how dope my punchline and my flow is, right? Now. Exactly. And that's what I mean about it. you could follow that flow from beginning to the end, even though there's hella flow switch ups, because not one flow for his verse. He switches the flow maybe three times in that verse. But the journey, everything has a landing point. You listen to, and this is the perfect song to analyze because the two most controlled members go first, the two least controlled. No, I'm, I'm lying, I'm lying, not this song. Um, first and third, I think. Yeah. H plus goes third. Right, but this is this, this is the song where Festo has the most control too, so he sounds good. Opio is the weak link on this song. Like He doesn't even finish his verse in a way that lands nicely with the hook coming in. He's still rapping while the hook comes in. He's like, what do you say? I fix you and hit you. So, 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 so. Writer, your rhymes are all right. A little reminiscent of the poetry I write. Astoundingly, astounding like me. Might we step outside and handle this like false catastrophes? I laugh at these because they shit is a stop. Because my shit is astonishing. Demolishing you and your following. I'm swallowing MCs like I was a black hole. Ransack those whack flows who chose to uppose. I don't suppose. Uh, Dara, where my stubble grows, reverses the process. God bless you, swing. And woe is you. Opio disposes of crews like snotty tissues. I rip through bodies with corkscrews. You wish you never tried. Yeah, the wish you never tried. It, it, it doesn't land, and he's, so he's still saying it by the time the hook comes in. So he loses control of the verse in the middle, probably around the part where you pause is where it started, where you start talking about stubble and black hole. It's like a freestyle flow for the most part. They do a lot of that. There you go. My it brother. It's like a dope freestyle, but it just, it doesn't come off that way sometimes. But but even this, nothing says I, so he doesn't get the rhyme never tried. So maybe he just ends it like that because he doesn't want to emphasize the fact that he actually was rhyming issue, disposes of crude snotty tissues, rip through, with court shoes, you wish you never tried. Right. Yeah, he, he could have said, more, wish if, you never yeah, tried. Yeah, if he had more control, he would have chosen the sentence that rhymed with the flow. Right. Uh, brother, I could hug you right now. You you finally said it, freestyle flow. That's what this is. Like, they were such in the in the habit of freestyling everywhere they went uh, that some rappers, you could tell, their album flows are freestyle flows. Snoop is good for that, but Snoop has a very controlled freestyle flow. Busta Rhymes, when I just did uh, When Disaster Strikes album, I pointed, I pointed out Rhymes Galore, how he maintained the flow but really wasn't saying shit in that song, right? Hey Buster, I love you bro, but uh... It's a lot of it's a lot of that through a career. You know? it's all, <laughs> like, exactly. It's all he, was, he busts rhymes. He's good through at his career, rhymes. right? You listen to a song like the Shiznit on Doggy Style. You could tell Snoop is freestyling that whole song. You can't see the nigga. Da, 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 da. He's just saying some of his like cliche sayings that that you know are his go-to statements in freestyles. Like we know this from rappers as as being rappers. So that's why I was waiting for you to point that out that you know that some of this shit is freestyle flow. Cause if you ask me or you to freestyle, we would probably rap like how Souls of Mischief are rapping on this album. Cause we're skilled at freestyling, <laughs> right? I've been doing this at like 18 or 17 or whatever they're doing, that's so fire. Exactly, that's and that's exactly how I would rap right now if you actually, I'd be like, I'm plates and crates, I'm ready as the sticks. Cause I'm just <laughs> letting the flow lead me. I'm not, I didn't know what I was gonna say. So I'm reaching for it. So some mm -hmm. rappers have better control. Anyway, what you giving the flow on a scale from one to five? <laughs> All right, the flows from one to five, uh, four? Four, got you. All right, that takes us to dimension five. I feel like you've been waiting to talk about this. The wordplay and the bar intent. Oh man. Sheesh. Sheesh. I just talked about it for a bunch, didn't I? Well, like, well no, nah, we didn't get words specific, but yeah. <laughs> oof, I'm, I'm about to have to look up a lot of these lyrics, man, because there's a oof. lot in here, man. So we I talked mean, about we talked about uh 
for one, they used the onomatopoeia because it's 93, making sound effects was, was still in. Um, but the most interesting thing that I, that I think gets used here, Tajay, I gotta give him props, he uses homonyms, which is one of the most underrated MC devices, uh, which is in the entendre family. So, you know, there's, there's three examples I'd give. Like he said, or he'll bend words, right? So the mm -hmm. first example, he says on limitations, I'm annoying like hemorrhoids. And then he starts saying something like preparation, I ate you. And I was like, did he just say preparation H, H connected to yeah. the, the hemorrhoid, but he made it make sense. Like I ate you as a rapper. And then he, uh, on a name I call myself, he said something like, welcome back. Cause I caught her. And I was like, yo. Right. Show for those that don't know. Yeah. Right. Welcome back, Cotter. And, and I'm like, this is what wordplay is. It's not simile. It's not metaphor because there's plenty of that on the album too. Right. It's, it's not like, like, it. like. And then he does this other thing, which is my favorite rhyme device, where you do a threaded theme. Right. So on Make Your Mind Up, he does this Popeye theme. Right. And he's like, no amounts of spinach, something because I get brute. Uh, <laughs> wimpy you haggard like i was like yo did he mention every supporting character from the popeyes mm -hmm. cartoon <laughs> yeah. he just hit a scheme you know what i mean that's what they call him battle right now it's a scheme you know what i mean yeah and he then a scheme in 93. right you know what I'm <laughs> it's like oh my God. right and then you'll get your your similes like i think you mentioned this in the first video i can like campbell i bust like cleavage things that now might seem real pedestrian but what I love about good rappers who, are, who, are, who, are, who do this, when they know that they're using those kind of elementary punchlines, they don't make that the big curtain reveal or mic drop moment. They just keep hitting you with a bunch of those, which makes mm -hmm. it impressive. You can't deliver a rhyme like that, like that's the punchline. Like, but even back I, then you could in 93. Right, you could because these were new. They didn't choose to do that and just leave it like that. They gave you all these tools. And that's You're why right. I give them so much credit for this album. It's yes. Crazy. Cause in 93, you could get off with, with these cause they were brand new. There was so many, it's like your mama jokes. When the, your mama jokes were new, they were like, oh my God, I can't believe you After you've heard it, it's like, nah, I heard this before, right? Mm -hmm. So bust like cleavage, no one has said that before. It was dope. But like you said, they still didn't choose to say, then it's and I leave it. Why? Because I bust like cleavage. They didn't, they didn't leave it open like that. They just kept it going. Um, yeah. What, what you got on the wordplay? Anything else I, I didn't know? Just like, I keep going back to make your mind up. And when it's just like, you get these ABBAs, all this syllable work, and they're squeezing punchlines in there, and you just don't even know they're punchlines, but then they're also just things, uh, common day things you're dealing with, top ramen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your bottom, never top, because I'm ramen. Then oh, yeah. think of the... Think of how we'll many times like people bottom people. ramen. It's like, what's bottom ramen? Never top, never right. top. So you'll never stop the atom bottom. You so it's like, you're not gonna be on top. You're cooking right. like bottom ramen. And that's it's where top it's top ramen. You're no, not on top. That's what I mean about bar and tech. And then we even think about how many times A plus vacillates between using his government name. That that was uncommon for rappers to just be like, yeah, Adam. And he's playing with it phonetically. He's like, yeah, Adam bombing. <laughs> like, Come on, man. They were doing stuff that didn't get appreciated until the 2000s. Alliteration. Alliteration is always not easy to do, and it can be corny if you don't do it right, and they did it well on this album. Um, yeah, I thought Tajay was very purposeful in his writing throughout yeah. the whole album. I thought A Plus stylistically was killing it. I thought OPO was just, just like fire, water, mixing those things in, but his was transition, his purpose this thing seemed more like transitions to me. Yeah, transit. I feel like sometimes, again, just like with the the delivery, I think, or the flow, I think Opio might have got lost in some of the points he was making. Because if I listen to Live and Let Live, A Plus's verse and Tajay's verse are completely clear from beginning to end. Hey, I don't want to do this. I'm not above this. Because uh, he's like, I don't want to hit men, but bullets hurt when they rip skin, right? And Opio's talking about oh i think he's metaphorically talking about his rats being the bullet and the gun but it's just not clear that that's what he's doing and so he's going from point a to z and it, he doesn't land it as clearly same thing with he says something like 
on one of the songs about, oh, my verses are satanic. I'm liable to say things that make you grab your Bible, but mm -hmm. in between is a bunch of unrelated stuff and it just kind of goes somewhere else. But intent wise, Tajay and A plus know exactly where they want to take you in each verse. Uh, you mentioned vocabulary. Um, you're going to hear bigger words than <laughs> you've ever heard in most rap at the time. Like, uh, shoot, on, or anything can happen, Tajay says, I can't believe they left my boy perforated. Perforated. <laughs> <laughs> and then freaking uh, Festo on Never No More is opening line. I hit the blunts with locution. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's like, yo, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Because, uh, and also, that's where it was like, it tapped into me because I'm in high school learning my vocabulary and hearing certain words for the first time. And then I'm hearing them say it like, oh, that's that word from class. You know what I mean? And, and even some of the more common words that are probably more common now, like you just, you weren't hearing back then. I feel like A plus only falters on songs like a name I call myself where, he, where he's like, the corn's on your husk, you must rat. I was like, that's a reach. This is you just trying to make a word rhyme that's next to the other rhyme. I feel like that's the only verse where he stutters a little, but for the most part, he's gonna connect things back or forward to what he's saying. Like he says something like, I, in your stream like a blood clot, which is a curse in Jamaican, but I am that, <laughs> so stand back and like. But yeah, the intent is high for the most part. If they're gonna say something silly, it serves a purpose for the most part, especially from the two most grounded members. Yeah. What you giving the bar intent and wordplay on a scale from one to five? Five. Nice. That takes us right into dimension six, the quotability. So this is either the punchlines or the poetic wisdom or both. And so you talked about the punchlines before. Yeah, Tajay just is going crazy all over this. Um, since their flows are hard to mimic, it's hard to get a bunch of quotes. I used to be able to quote all like half an hour, but but there was definitely like just hard punches. I mean, for like as much as I keep bringing this one up, this, the Batman sound effects line was just incredible back then. Because <laughs> The Batman old school TV show was still in syndication on the repeat side. And so as a kid, you see the Batman punch somebody and say, pow, <laughs> in, in cartoon letters, Bow! you hear a trumpet play and it's Bow! Bow! <laughs> And that was a, a thing that was funny to you as a kid. You you seeing that and then somebody bringing that out in a rap form and then you, you were relating to it. It was just like such a big punchline. Like, that was one of the main ones for the album that you would remember, unfortunately. It's like something silly like that is this, because you're whacking it's Batman sound effects. It just yeah. reminds you of that whole era of battle rap, MC style poetry. Like, I'm better than you. This is how whack you are. Right. And oh, right. right type thing. You know what I mean? And then and they get deeper with the deeper punchlines and wordplay. Yeah, but I think they can still do that. <laughs> the ones who reach for the punchlines the most were going to be Tajay and Opio. I think uh, A plus casually lands some of his, like he said something like, um, I'm in the house like punishment or is something like pun that house, like punishment. Right. Yeah. Oh, it is, I, loved like, it. I loved it. What, what you could appreciate about them is that they really were not trying to go out their way to be like, listen to my punchline. Yeah, man. Yeah, so then Poetic Wisdom, do we get any of that on this album? Oh, yeah. On the Poetic Wisdom side, on those life rhymes that, that you hear on the album is where you understand the profundity of these guys. And I do think Live and Let Live, we talked about that being the heaviest song on the album. The statements made on there about young Black life or young life in Oakland it speaks universally. I think you could translate that to any mm -hmm. urban inner city environment, especially Tajay's verse, because he really lays it all out. He's like, and and you know, I'm always a fan of when you can keep the same level of cleverness you do in your braggadocial raps, even on your non-braggadocial raps. And Tajay does that. He's like, yeah, I'm skinny, but my lead friends are diesel. <laughs> Follow me down the dark alleyway, you'll get your answer. But he's like, I don't want to do this. And this is what brings me to do that. And then he ends it even with a bar, right? I gotta keep a peace because I'm peaceless. Like, 
And he Fine. explains his position where I think A plus does it on a ground level where maybe the more street orientated listeners are gonna catch all his references to guns. He's like, well, this is what guns would do. Cause he's like, have I asked you, have you ever heard bullets whizzing past you? You know, this is why I do what I'm doing. Um, just, just deep stuff. And then tell me who profits. It's full of rhetorical questions. And yeah, definitely. That's where, that's where you're gonna find the poetic wisdom. Um, that was, for a time, that was my favorite song on the album for two seconds. Like, well, not only want to say two seconds, but you know, when you listen to an album so much, the favorite switch. Yeah. So at one point, that was my favorite joint. Tell me who profits. DC got schemes, and we ain't got shit. Yeah. And it's like, who is talking about that part of it? Like, like you get one person talking about rumors and gossip in one verse. Uh -huh. Two people talking about, man, I'm trying to be goody good, but actually I'm about to go ahead and get this money and hustle mm -hmm. and all this. Why are you doing that? That's stupid, that's this and that. We got to do it. We're this, we're that, we're so tough. But wait, how do we get here anyway? Then it's like, oh, these people, you know, these people got tricks and they got us fighting over these blacks they don't even tripping off they at the golf course teeing up and they go decisions on our lives yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it's like yo it's just it just does that and you know i just i was amazed by that as a as a high school kid trying to figure life out and seeing similar issues and feeling like and being in the, Lo the los angeles area when gang shit was really turning back up again through hip-hop music and through movies and it was being marketed to us a certain way because it was an element but then it was like a commercial element that was being sold like oh this is what we are it's funny that this aspect of souls and mischief's first album gets overlooked because it is a fair amount of talk on that but we'll jump into that in the next couple dimensions what are you giving this for quotability overall on a scale from one to five Hater four, bias five. Just to be real, this is how we chill from 93 till it's timeless as a, as a quotable. Yeah, there you go. You're right. The fact, the fact that they escaped the curse, because most projects that say the name of the, that say the, the year so blatantly get crumbled and lost in that. This is the 93 album that will forever be talked about to the point where people, yeah, still, still. So here we are. All right, so you said five and a hater four. <laughs> Bias five, hater four. The mention seven, the uh, concepts. This is not a concept album, but every good classic has something conceptual on it. Uh, any concept songs on here? Yeah, I thought, uh, how do we? 93 Till Infinity was kind of a chill out song, right? But it just tells you how we chill from 93 Till. It's the theme of the whole album. What a way to go out. You about to go out if you do this. It prompts you, by, by concept, I mean, it prompts you to have to put a little extra listening effort. Because like what you and I discussed about this this song earlier is you have to kind of know going into it, oh, they're not saying me, Opio, me, Festo. I, it's just, this is any young male USA who chooses this path. This is how you'll go out. You have to be listening with a different level of intent to pick up on that. If you're lazy listening, you're not gonna get it. And there's different ways that they go out for the person, for the people who ain't hip to the album, you know what I mean? I say Opio took the cake with this because I feel like he wrapped the story up and introduced the story the most organically. Like it, you had a beginning, a middle, and an end. I think the other guys kind of rushed their stories like out of nowhere, he shoots his little sister. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that was the shock value of it. So yeah. back then the shock value worked because you're thinking a little young, but now you, you break it down like it's a movie script and you're like, I probably would have known who my little sister was right. if I'm following her. Right. But, but Good story. when it first came out, it's like, whoa, that's a creative. I thought the, the whole verse was so imperfect until that part was a little like, eh, but that's yeah. me now. When I first heard it in 93, oh man, that's crazy. I think also because they pick such extreme examples. I think maybe that's also why OPOs seems the type because it's the most especially 93, we think about how big the AIDS epidemic was. It was the hot button topic. It was new to the hip hop community. Like wear rubber strap up was like the new slogan because mm -hmm. it hit so hard in 1990, 91. And um, his was the most realistic. I feel like Tajay and Festo went out their way to make like verses about being violent. What was interesting about Tajay's verse, he's the only one who refused to 
put like a go out thing. Like he's like, yeah, I got locked up and I lost my money, but I didn't go out. <laughs> Everybody else was like, I went out like a sucker. I'm like, yo, Dante, why you why you have to be a one? Uh, they also said he made it a point to put that Rakim sample from I Ain't No Joke and save it in my pocket for later. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there, there's that was really clever because it's asking you to picture all of these scenarios and without being preachy, they're, they're trying to give you this message. But yeah, what are you giving this on a scale from one to five for conceptual content? Um, four. I want to give it a, you know, I'll give it a four. Okay. I'll it takes it. The, the actual content. We touched on it when we were talking about the ratio. Now let's break it down. Dimension eight is external content. How much are they talking about things outside of their internal monologue, things that aren't autobiographical, things that are like statements on social commentary or government politics, whatever, the world, the hood. To mention nine, internal content is just that, that how much of themselves are they giving you? How much expository stuff? Hmm. So we talked about a name I call myself. That's their song about women, their sexual exploits or their sexual prowess with women. So that is topical. Uh, I don't know how external or internal it is. Cause I think, I think the hook hits you. I think the hook is where the sauce is on that song. And I think that's where the theme and the concept really is. It's less about the women that were, you know, collecting in a sense. It's more about, I call myself the man, you know what I'm saying? And this is why I'm the man. You hear this little beat? I call myself the man, yeah. Because yeah. I'm the man. This is like um, camaraderie with your homeboys talking to women. That's what it's about. It's not about actually trying to talk a woman into sleeping with you or be, right. using that smooth language. It's like you talk like you're talking to your homies. You're almost talking crazy and saying wild stuff. You're right. Really, you're not really trying to win her over. You're just talking about how dope you are. And it, and even, and they're telling you more about themselves because it just sounds like a bunch of high school boys talking like a bunch of shit that they might do, might not have done. Right, right. right. They got the confidence. She's like, movie clapping. Like, oh, that was, I was about to hit that, yo. It's like, oh, yeah. you ain't hitting nothing. Like, whatever, but I still got my confidence up. You can't tell right. me. And that's where that song feels. That's how that song feels to me. You know what I'm would saying? You, would you throw that in the internal bag or the external bag? Um, it's what hard because I feel like the the hook is where it's internal. Like I call yeah. myself. I mean, this is how I feel when I'm out here doing this. You know what I mean? Now some of the, the rhymes are fanatical, and it's like fantastical in a sense. But right, so it's, it's a little. Like, it's, it's, it's a little, little bit of both. Yeah, that's 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 a. I don't want to say it's like a Cliff, Mr. Cliff Kick Rocks type of feel. <laughs> oh, it is. But it is, you know what I mean? And, and most <laughs> albums back then had somebody, had some, I mean. Yeah. 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 This is your, it's like not disrespectful women, but disrespectful at the same time. But like you said, it's locker room talk. Yeah, it's locker room talk. And for very the, detailed like locker room talk. When I bend the limbs and flim, they like, they really mm -hmm. got it nerdy with it but uh okay but that is a form of content right so then we talk about um what you and brandon brought up this idea of 93 till infinity actual actually having some content and not being just a, a braggadocio it's a mix of here's a snapshot in the day of our lives in east oakland where it gets kind of hectic right mm -hmm. <laughs> uh Get the seven digits. I always thought the the lead offline was an example of that thing that I said the OPO does. Like it wasn't. He was just rhyming words like a freestyle. Digit, Bridget, Midget. Like, <laughs> but you're right because Tajay comes in. He's like, "Well, you look great. Be ready at eight. You know. So they are slipping in talk in the vein of like getting women, but that's externalized. Uh, Tell me who profits is probably the most externalized song on here because this is their mm -hmm. statement on things outside of themselves. Like you said, it was A plus a statement on gossip, Festo and Opio statement on value and education over fast money, and then Tajay's statement on who's making the bigger decisions that affect us who live in these urban environments. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's big external content. Live and let live, that's internal. That's each of them telling you their credo 
or their their philosophy on why violence is sometimes an 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 option. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So I mean, there's a fair amount of both. Anything, anything can happen, which is the confusing one, right? Because <laughs> like, that's the one that also sounds like I'm making up some crime story, mm-hmm. and it's fun. You know, f- fiction is fun, but but then you like you question it. It's like maybe they're capable of this or not like we don't know that's the mystery of, of the whole thing yeah on the both dimensions eight and nine external internal content what are you giving this on a scale from one to five did they do a good job on it it's yeah. almost like that's the question it's almost like i thought they did a good job on it but i who yeah five <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm five like, because this is why I know when I listen to an album and there's people on the album and this is a four man group. Do I know these brothers by the end of the album? Yeah, I know where they come from. Do I know what they're trying to say? Do I know parts of their personalities? Do I know these guys when I listen? And when I finish listening to the, before listen, finishing the album, one third the way through the album, I know who these guys were and they yeah. stayed on point. So it's like, yeah, I. There's nothing I can say, but yeah, I, I, I'm feeling it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, five on both external and internal. Let's take it home. Final dimension, dimension 10, storytelling. We've already been touching on this the whole time. Anything can happen. Uh, what you're given, that's really the only story on here, right? There's storytelling elements of some verses. Um, what a way to go out is four separate stories. Oh, yeah. Um, Tell me who Prophet's second verse is kind of, it's not really a story, right? Yeah. Not really a story. This story, this I'm story, sure I, that I, think, I think they spend four bars per verse doing something like, even when Tajay starts talking about the people playing golf and he's like, oh, he never, he 60 years and he didn't go to New York once until he was 60 to see the opera, you know, like, and then, like you said, in the middle of that second verse, they're like, I'm on my way to class, but I know I'm gonna get a grade because the teacher always pat, like that kind of thing, right? Um, I think their story is told well throughout the album and I think their storytelling songs are, are done well. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, and even when, even in 93 Till, it's kind of like that passive story thing. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm chilling in the cooler, break out the ruler, damn. And they talk about just having fun. It's kind of the story of hanging with us, in a, or them, in a sense. And, uh, what's the what, second on that? I'm similar as well. I can't remember. So, what you're giving the level of storytelling on a scale from one to five? Um, I want to go high with five, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go with no four and a half. Let's go with four. Okay. There's better storytelling albums. Yes. So, like. Like I always, you know, I'm a big Nas Lost Tape guy. It's like Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> yeah, I would, I would reserve five for Slick Rick Nas level storytelling. Yeah, yeah like it's crazy. Now, Souls Mischief has another album recently, maybe their latest album. They, all four of them just told a whole. It's a whole story. The right. whole album is a story with four people in it. What? It's a concept of story. I, I can say the name of it. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but. That's dope. That. And, it, and for me, those type of albums is like, they're usually hit or miss. It's pretty dope. Yes. It's but like, I want to hear the whole story. Yeah. yeah. Listen, Cliff, it's, it's been amazing to have you. I wouldn't have wanted, uh, only only ones I would have wanted to do this al- album review with the, the members themselves, man. Like you and Brandon, great guests. You have always been uh, someone whose hip hop opinion I, I regard and respect highly. Uh, I knew you were the man for the job. I knew how much this album meant for you. Thank you for uh, challenging me, as always. <laughs> oh, that's half the fun, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and your insight, man. Thank you for that. Uh, it's nothing. I, w- I, I kind of wish I could tap into my old insight from when I first heard, used to know the album back of my, like, the back of my hand, you know what I mean? It's just been so long. If you're not being too much in your humble bag, bro, can you tell them where they could find you, what you might have on the horizon. Oh man, Mr. Cliff, if you see the name, uh, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, Z2, just MR.CLIF. Yeah, you can hear the material from your boy. I got some more music I'm hoping to put out soon. 
I'm always dabbling, throwing some things out. You can definitely hear me on SoundCloud. You know what I mean? Holler at your boy, cop something if you want. You know, get some listens in, do what you do. Yeah, and if you randomly stumble across his social media, you might catch him doing a little car freestyle every now and then. Uh, you might see some clips of me and him doing car freestyles from any time right. to look up. So shout out to the whole DMV. Shout out to HU. HU? You know. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be the truth to get you no good. Yeah, man. What you know good. I mean, this man has made so many of my favorite raps from people I know. Uh, <laughs> rap songs. Just uh, do yourself a favor and go check out the music. And until then, y'all know what it is. Um, this is how we chill from 93 till 30 years. F a rap critic. They talk about it while I live it. Word to meth.